Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. Yet another special guest with us today. We have Mr. Marwan Aman, if that is how you pronounce it. Absolutely, yeah. Hello. How's it going, guys? So, he is a quarter of the base gang, as you might know him most, but he also puts out his own uh, own his own music. I'm stumbling on my words today. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to jump in here briefly to the... Um, Oh, there you are, finally. Video is lagging. I'm going to jump into our community-related questions, and this one's going to be pretty open-ended, so as long as you've got time, then we've got time, too. So Let's go for it. <laughs> All right, so jumping into it quite swiftly, um, what or who got you into music, and how did you find out that you could sing? Hmm. Well, my whole family pretty much is, like, musically inclined. My mom, dad, s- sister, like, um, and I've been in this like local children's choir ever since I was like seven years old up to like 18 years old. So 11 years of my life, I've been singing in a choir, basically. I've played many different instruments. Um, yeah, I've just been, since I was very young, very musically inclined, my entire family, pretty much. <laughs> my my dad got me into like music production and mixing, really helped me with that. Like, especially when I first discovered like acapella music, like as a genre. When I wanted to create something like that myself, he really helped me along that path. How about how long of a, um, how long of a career did he have in audio mixing? Oh, pretty much his entire life. <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's what he does for a living. I was gonna say because I can, I can truly see it in your mixing and your um, music and such. I mean, it it really mm-hmm. there's a lot of high quality stuff in there. So that's so you went through the children's choir. You said uh, seven, eight, seven, seven to eighteen. Seven yeah. to eighteen. And for those that don't know, Marwan is eighteen now, right? Eighteen. I am. I'm, I'm turning nineteen in like a week from now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy early birthday, my brother. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So that brings. I'll have another question related to that um, local singing history later, but. Um, yeah, so he got into it using just local music and local singing. So how did you fall in love with uh, acapella? This is a side question. This is kind of a long story, so buckle up. Um, <laughs> late 2017, there's this movie that came out called Bohemian Rhapsody, like depicting the life story of the band Queen and Freddie Mercury and stuff. Oh, and the lead, yeah. actor, the lead actor in that movie, his name is Rami Malek. He's originally Egyptian, where I'm from. So the movie gained a lot of popularity over here in the country. He won an Oscar for that role as well. So I was like, the hell is this movie? I've, I I had never heard of Queen before or the song Bohemian Rhapsody at all. I was like 15 at the time, maybe. Yeah. So I looked it up. I listened to Bohemian Rhapsody for the first time. I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, over the next few days, I kept looking for like different covers of the song and stuff, like instrumental covers, freaking um, whatever. And then I just one day stumbled upon Pentatonix's cover of Bohemian Rhapsody. And I kid you not, I was sitting there for six minutes straight, just looking like that, like in complete yeah, awe of what I was listening to. Jaw on the floor, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Such an incredible experience. Ever since then, I just fell in love with this entire acapella scene, pretty much. And I thought to myself that if they can do it, I can. So the hell, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I think the, I think my uh, love for it builds back off of one of those other recordings. Did you ever remember watching... Um, one of Pentatonix's oldest ones, like I think it's Evolution of Music. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Dude, I think that was the one that truly got me into it. But uh, that is sick. Their yeah, evolution it, videos are like one of their most iconic <laughs> types of videos ever. So it's so sick. Going on from Gregorian chant all the end of the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. It was so, so good. And Incredible. the best, it's just a cappella too. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, who are some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career? Hmm. Like first thing that that popped into my mind is my dad. He helped me so much with my entire career. Um, Influential, like singers I've been inspired by a lot. I'm I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan ever since I was like Mm -hmm. 10 years old or something. (laughs) <laughs> I've been listening to him a long time, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, huge fan of Jonathan Young. He's such an incredible artist. <laughs> um, 
like yeah these are what popped in my head right now that's all i can think of pretty much yeah i've I just recently listened to jonathan young and i was kind of impressed not gonna lie he I, is insane he is just insane he can do everything <laughs> like literally seriously. like i would literally be listening to some jeff songs and then and then he would just one of his songs would just randomly pop up and i'm like that has yep. that's like a totally different genre but <laughs> i mean it's good music not, well, man, yeah, I have to yeah listen to it speaking of jeff like jeff avi and tim like that trio really helped me like push through my my like bass singing career they're, like the they're pretty much the biggest sources of inspiration in my bass singing career yeah yeah and yeah, I believe definitely. any young bass singer can say that as well. Well, yeah, I, I'll tell you at the end of the day, some of them have been the biggest influences when it comes to both a cappella singers and uh, bass singers alike. But those are some massive influences. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What What is some of the? I can't talk today. What is something <laughs> that one of those influential figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire career, your entire life? Hmm. I have never given that any thought, but I, I would say like um, when the bass gang was working on uh, our cover of Centuries with Jonathan Young, uh, yeah. we did like a Zoom call with him when I uh, first finished the arrangement. I was showing it to the guys for the first time and Jonathan, he really loved it. He kept praising the arrangement a lot. Um, he was very impressed by some of the techniques I used there. Like his... his um, Words really affected me in that meeting, pretty much. Yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And of course, my my father's constant like encouragement throughout my entire career has been the greatest thing ever. I don't. I, for, I forgot to ask this earlier, but did he ever sing too? I don't remember if he said that or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. sings. He's a he's a tenor actually, surprisingly, <laughs> and, like a low tenor. And you, and you being the bass is kind of yeah. Kind of funny. I don't know how, but that's what it came to be. <laughs> Did that ever run in your family? I think one of my grandparents had like a deep voice. <laughs> but other than him, I, I don't know. No one else. <laughs> well, I would say, I mean, you do have you do have a, a pretty boomy voice, but I'd say it has the timber more of like a more like a lyric baritone. But it's 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 very uh, yeah. It, it's it's not that dark. Like it's low, but but light at the same time. That's what I, that's it, how I would describe it. And it's so it's so iconic because I I remember I'd be listening to some of your music and I'd be like, there is never going to be anyone in the world that has that same kind of voice. It, it's it's just you hear it and you're just like, that is so unique. You're never going to hear another voice like that ever again. Huh. Well, thank you. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's it's especially evident in uh, hide and seek, especially that part where you're where you took over the lead like midway through, right after Bobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I I can hear what you're talking about. Yeah, the difference between like me and Bobby's timbre specifically is very clear there. It's very, very, <laughs> very different, but it's so <laughs> cool at the same time. Oh, um, what is uh. I already read that question. Do you play any instruments? Um, and if so, what are they? Obviously, right there. with, with the, the bass in the back. Yeah, I play bass and I play... I, I dabble in a little bit of piano. Other than that, um, I, I've tried violin for like a year. Didn't really get into it that much. But right now, I'm in love with the bass and the piano. So yeah, <laughs> those two <laughs> specific. So, how long have you been playing uh, both of those? Um, piano for like five, four years, like five years. Yeah. Bass. I, I, a little less than half a year. So not yeah. that long ago. And recent pickup. Kind of, kind of just started. Yeah. How you liking it? It is incredible. Just the most groovy instrument ever. <laughs> it's so sick. I love it. I thought about trying it at one point and then I was like, well, I mean, I, I pick around on the guitar, but I was, eh, it depends. Mm -hmm. How is it in, I mean, you ever play guitar? I have not no. Uh, okay, I was just curious. I was trying to figure out like what the, what the diff like difficulty level is in comparison. So, I was just curious. Uh, I thought about I it. would ask a guitarist, not me. To be <laughs> honest, I couldn't tell you. That's cool stuff, man. So you've been so the bass is recent pickup. The we've already asked that. What are some things that people may not know about you? So something that some things that 
um, that might not be immediately evident in your internet music career that people's oh, that side of you, I guess you could say. <clears throat> well, I guess some people think I look older than I actually am. Like no one, <laughs> m most people get surprised when they know that I'm 18 years old, <laughs> I guess. I, That's I mean, what I stumble into a lot. You give off like 20 or 21 year old vibes, but really? I was like, but I was like, he 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 does look kind of young, but I was, but it hmm. it doesn't doesn't look quite that young, at least in yeah yeah. yeah. I get you, but yeah, it's the age that kind of surprises people the most for for some reason. But I'm I'm okay with it. That seems <laughs> to be a regular occurrence too. When, whenever I'll be listening to music or I'll hear people talk about your music, they'll be like, they're still baffled that you're under twenty and and pushing out music that's pretty much arguably on the same level as the biggest names in the industry. These types of comment comments are so encouraging to read. I love it. I mean, whenever, I mean, back when I, I first covered the first bass gang song. So the, the hide and seek was your arrangement. And yes. that is, I think I doted on this whenever I was in that reaction, but that is by far one of the most brutal r arrangements from a listener's perspective. Like I, I had, I had, I would have spent another probably 30 minutes breaking it down in that video, but I just didn't have the time. Oh, yeah. It, it has a lot of details in there. It's very... It, it is incredibly nuanced. Yep. I was just sitting there, and I was thinking, and the person that arranged this is under 20 years old, and he's putting <laughs> and he's giving a, he's putting out arrangements that are more complicated than a lot of arrangements from the biggest names in the industry. And I was like, holy crap. Fair enough. <laughs> like I couldn't even break it all down in one video, but yeah, I I would say it is my best arrangement yet. Yeah, we'll we'll get it. We'll dive into that more in a little bit. But I had to had to mention that it was so much awesome. fun. <laughs> so, um, what are some things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, re recording, performing, etc.? Um. Well, I just like to hang out with my friends. Pretty much my my friends from college. Um, I'm currently in final season in college, so that's taken up a lot of my time. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, I'm kind of into video games as well. A little bit of Ooh, Minecraft hello. every here and there. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, every now and then. You... But pretty much just hanging out with my friends, college, and video games. Other you... than that, I'm just working. And especially because, like, I love what I do, like, recording, arranging, all that. So it's... It's 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 not it's not the, it's not as much of a burden to me as it is just doing what I love. Yeah, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, dude. And at the end of the day, too, you gotta you gotta have like an original job, you know, because you get they're getting started out in music is not exactly the easiest thing to do, and the money comes mm -hmm. later. So, or at least typically it does. But with the talent that that um, Marwan's got, he, he's he's destined to succeed. So. But I that, hope so. <laughs> well, you're already on your way. Uh, let's see. What was it else I was going to say? Yeah, so you typically... Yeah, so he pretty much... I, My brain is fogged up really bad, <laughs> and I'm struggling. Take your time, dude. But the... um, Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. So do you play Minecraft on PC or any or what other? PC, what yes. PC? I do not have any consoles. I've always been a PC guy. I'll have to catch up with you after we stop recording. I might, every once in a while, I might play or Ooh. something. Let's I, do it. Yeah, I've been, I've played before. It's just I'm a little behind on the game. A few updates behind. Mm -hmm. I ain't been played in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. Let's see. Moving on swiftly to the next one. So how often do you practice singing through the week? And how long do you typically practice for whenever you're practicing? Right. Um, me like sitting down and practicing, it doesn't happen as much because I just, I just usually, I usually, <clears throat> I sing just whenever I'm like sitting there. I'm, I'm singing all the time, pretty much humming <laughs> yeah. different songs and stuff. If I'm not like recording. So yeah, it just happens pretty regularly. I don't like sit down and start practicing singing and doing like vocal exercise and stuff. No, I just I just sing. <laughs> I've kind of I've kind of found myself doing the same thing. Like everyone advocates for sitting down practicing and all that, and I'm just like, it's in my nature. I'll just be sitting here and I'll just be start humming along, and then I'll like 
I like the tune. I'm gonna record something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Warm ups are definitely essential though before recording. But oh, like yeah. pra practicing singing isn't isn't something I do. Yeah, I hear you on that. Let's see. Why is it frozen again? Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. So, uh, what does your warm up routine look like on any given day? And do you have a go to warm up exercise? I even though I just said warm ups are essential before recording, I don't have like any specific routine or thing I do. Like yeah. for bass, um, it's better if you just wake up, stand in front of the mic, and start recording. For higher stuff, you could like warm up with a few scales on different vowels, like pretty much the like the bare essential stuff. Nothing too complicated. Yeah, that's pretty much it. it and it seems like the warm ups for the bass voice too are typically not that complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah not at all. That is, if there are any. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you wake up, you sing. Yep, pretty much. For those that don't know, the morning voice for, for bass singers is pretty much all the time the best time to record. So, let's see. So, it, what is your daily uh, chest range? Like, so like your usable chest range? I would say daily usable, like C2, C sharp 2. So, like, anything above... E4, I kind of start straining a little bit. So yeah, I'd say like C2 to E4. C2 to E4. Maybe maybe B1, I don't know. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet range there. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Given the timber. Um, so what are your a record high and low chest notes? I think I like kind of hit a B flat 4 chest before, but that was like a one-time thing. I wouldn't count it at all. <laughs> a4 I've hit in multiple videos of mine before. I, I So I would say A4 as like A4. my record highest. Record lowest is a G1. It has never been in any of my arrangements before, but G sharp one has been featured a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know I've heard it from you at some point. I was like, mm -hmm. that was that was pretty sweet, especially with the timbre and such. Let's see. What is the daily range? Let's see. What is your, um, what would you say your uh, range is, including extended techniques and the head voice register? So are we talking records or like usable? Usable daily? in your extended and head voice. I'd say I can comfortably go down to like E1 and subharmonic, which is pretty much the only like technique I can properly use down there. I don't do growl that much. I never tried inhale. A chest fry is not that reliable for me as well. So like subs uh, down to like E1 comfortably. Record being a B flat one, B flat zero, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For head voice, uh, highest record is like A5. Reliably, I'd say like E5 or something. It's, it's pretty Maybe solid. A5. Yeah. Pretty solid. I'm still... I will have to say, dude, your your subs are pretty strong. I'm I'm still learning the ropes of them. They're pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. My preferred extended technique by far is both. Well, I'm starting to get better at subs, so I might change that my preferred at some point. But awesome. Inhale is probably my favorite. Ooh, it's 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 it's, it's like it might be the hardest out of them to to nail. It's it's, it's truly as far as like getting the sound. It's it's very easy but getting a smooth balanced sound in addition like to like an like an actual controlled pitch controlled pitch too it's just it's really hard i mean yeah, yeah it's I mean, very difficult it is very whoa. there you go you could you, you could ask tommy a lot about inhale he is the master at it he did a really good one he did a, his uh ri his ridiculously low parts in um emperor's new clothes that was some ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, scenario. the like riff down, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like down the octave and in inhale. Yes. It, he's he's insane at it. I'm hoping to, to get him on here and talk about his techniques because I've, I mean, like I'm here, Absolutely. I hear him, and I'm like, you know, I, <laughs> it's they're That's well fair, controlled. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
do you, so this is a question that's not, this, I don't normally ask this if it's um, obvious, but this is not immediately obvious to me, so I'm going to ask. Um, okay. Do you have perfect pitch? Not perfect pitch to the point where I, like, listen to the note and instantly tell you what it is, but, like, give me one or two seconds and I'll, I'll let you know what the note is. Gotcha. <laughs> so, like, like pre pretty decent relative pitch. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, I've, I was, I think you were in kind of the same boat as uh, Peter. So it'd be like, you, you, you can pull it, you can pull it pretty quick. So I was like, oh, I better ask because that's not immediately obvious to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that like Charlie Puth type perfect pitch, not yeah. there. <laughs> he is just a, <laughs> he's a freak of nature. He, he's a, yeah, he's it's it's freaky. Uh, um. Who are some of your personal favorite artists that you have collaborated with, if you have any? Like, all people for, that the Bass Gang have collaborated with, I truly cannot choose a favorite between these five. Um, but honestly, like, Lauren Paley in Hide and Seek, it, it has to be one of her best performances yet. Jonathan Young, of course. Um... Eric Holloway, I did a cover of Heat Waves with him for my own channel. I saw that. I, did, I hadn't got to listen to it yet, but I did see that. He was incredible in that as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think I can honestly pick one favorite because there I, I recruit so many great people. But, yeah. It's, it's good at the end of the day, too. And, and that's just a sign that you're enjoying what you do because you, you just you enjoy it regardless of who you work with. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, so that's a two part question. So the second part would be who are some people that you would like to collaborate with in the future? <clears throat> I think the most obvious answer would be like one of the big three bases that we mentioned earlier. Oh yeah. If not, if not all three, like that's what instantly came to mind. I would, I'd love to work with maybe, maybe the base gang working with like voice play or home free at some point. That would be very dope. I th I think it's a I think it's in the cards because y'all have recent y'all have made a pretty decent name for yourselves. We're getting there. Yeah. I mean, if you're getting voice plays attention on your on your music, then mm -hmm. that's already pretty big. Peter Hollins would be a great person to collab with as well. As well, he's oh yeah, so talented. He 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 actually saw some of my work before as well. So yeah, we're that's kind of cool. familiar with who I am. That's pretty cool, dude. That is so cool. <laughs> Isn't it not like the coolest thing ever to be getting recognition from the big? Oh, names? absolutely! Yeah, it is. It is so surreal, dude. Like one of the best <laughs> feelings ever. I I remember when I started getting recognition from like the big names here, reaction industry, and our mm -hmm. niche field of YouTube and music. And I just, it's it is indeed surreal. Where's the questions? They're here. Um. So here's a traditional question for the base gang so what is one of the funniest memories you have from working with the base gang funniest memories <laughs> or just best either way like honestly I, I couldn't pick out one because whenever we're together it's just hysterical to be honest <laughs> just a bunch of jokes thrown around everywhere so like I couldn't pick out one singular moment You'd it's probably... just a good time all around. <laughs> That's Special, how I describe it. I I imagine that the um that the the acapella jeopardies are a, a bit of a highlight when it comes. Oh to that. yeah, <laughs> definitely. That was so fun to do. Shout out to Casper for setting that up, dude. That was I have not laughed that hard in a long time. <laughs> it I is watched hilarious. that the other day. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that the most recent one with he had like the E one um section where he just asks you to pull an E1 out yeah, of your I butt out of nowhere. Yeah, I kind of fell flat there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was, was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. Literally watching three different people use three different extended techniques and just pull it out of their butt mm -hmm. and out of nowhere just boom, get an it's E1. It's incredible, yeah. It was one of the f it was just flat out hilarious. <clears throat> Golly. So um, this is an extended technique related question. Um, so right. this one's kind of obvious, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, we know kind of what your thoughts are on extended techniques as you use them, a lot of them and base gang uses a lot of them, 
but what are your thoughts on them uh, in singing uh, as a whole? Like, what are your thoughts on extended techniques? Like, some of them don't work as well in, like, a live performance setting. Like, in a studio setting, do whatever you want. Live performance, whether it be, like, a solo performance or, like, choir performance, pick out your techniques wisely. Like, you wouldn't want to use, like, a growl in a choir setting. Like, who does that? <laughs> subs, subs, subs could work. Like, I've seen some people use subharmonics. Like, people who have, like, loud and resonant subs use yeah. them in choir. People like Tu Yang, for example. Um, he's so sick at, like, resonating loud subharmonic notes. Um, yeah, I've heard people use chest fry in choral settings. But, like, some techniques are just meant for the microphone in a studio indeed uh tim faust we're looking at you with your growls live i don't know man but he does he does it really good live like he, yeah, he makes yeah. he, he pulls it off somehow i feel like growl is one of those techniques that you just it's very difficult to pull off live and it sounds somewhat decent i'm not that much of a growl guy to be honest i tried it like once or twice so i wouldn't know but like it does sound so sick when it's done live on like a proper subwoofer like it, i've seen videos of tim shaking like the the freaking stage he's on with his growl it is so sick yeah i remember watching one of those videos where he literally mm -hmm. bl blew the sound system. like yeah breaks the speakers yeah, yeah it's hilarious mm -hmm. tommy is really really good with it too tommy he's honestly a jack of all trades <clears throat> subs inhale growl chest fry most recently he's 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 get, he's collecting all the infinity stones <laughs> of the bass singing world. It won't be long Pretty before much. he's he it won't be long before he has them all and masters them yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> he's definitely jack of all trades. Uh let's see. So uh what all sub or subs what all extended techniques do you use? So we know you use subharmonics. Do you use any others? I know you mentioned you did growl once or twice, but do you are you willing to use any of them? any of the other ones that you don't normally use in another recording, perhaps. I have used like growl and chest fry and stuff in, in some arrangements of mine. It kind of depends on the song and the arrangement and how, and how I want it to go. But like subs are the most reliable thing I have right now. That's if we're talking like low extended techniques for high range. I've never tried like proper whistle. I don't know how to do it, but I can do like the inhale whistle. I've used that in a bunch of my covers before. Yeah, that. For, so, for some reason, I have gained the ability to, to like control that and to, like manipulate the pitch I want to do. It, it it works. It fills in the, the the part I want it to fill, and that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm trying mm -hmm. to learn that at some point. I'm no idea how to do it, but I, honestly, I'd I'd recommend going for like the classic whistle register. <laughs> <laughs> like the inhale one is not that reliable, even if I if even if I know how to like master it and control the pitch and stuff, it still sounds like too squeaky. Yeah, true. So so yeah, classic whistle whistle register is much better. Yeah, for sure. Let's see, so um, this is more of like a make you think question. Um, what is um, what of your favorite things about being a singer? This is a very broad question. You take it whatever direction you want. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I guess it's just the fact, like the idea of me doing what I love for a living is something that I'm I'm so lucky to have. And be, being a singer is definitely the only thing that I can imagine myself doing in the future. Yeah. So like, yeah, it is such a privilege. Without a doubt, man. <laughs> Especially when you've got someone that's, got the talent and people are starting to recognize it and the fact that you love to do it people recognize it and you're on the come up that's all you need that's all you <laughs> need man and it's 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 a crazy feeling to fully to start doing what you love to do and people start recognizing it and you start and you start to succeed with it it is truly absolutely yeah it's truly phenomenal it's the same feeling for me when i picked up this youtube channel back in the beginning of november so surreal. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So I've got one more for you. Then we'll have a bit of a 
break from traditional questions. So awesome. do, you, do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings, wants to sing, or is trying to make a career out of singing? Hmm. I would say just do it because you want to do it, because you love to do it, not because you have to do it or like for the money and stuff. Like put your passion into it. Pretty much. That's the most important tip uh, I would give. If the passion's not there, then what then what's the point, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's if all you, you need. If you don't if you don't love what you're doing, then why are you mm -hmm. doing it? There you go. That's the that's the entire like scope of like life when it comes to work. If you're mm -hmm. not if you don't enjoy what you're doing, why are you doing it? Then why bother? Exactly. Why bother? If if you can find a way to make a living off of what you love to do and what you're talented at doing, then mm -hmm. try to find a way, right? There you go. Yeah. So um, that brings us to the end of the traditional questions that we have. So this will be a little bit of a breather. So this will give you a chance to advertise, um, plug any merch, and at, just basically let us know what you got going on in your life. Share whatever you want to share. You have the floor for the next few minutes. So. Well, I guess keep an eye out for the Bass Gang's next release. We have something very big planned. Um, I'm planning to get some more covers out this year, like compared to last year. Yeah. So, like, yeah, uh, I'm working on, like, actually the biggest project I've ever done in my life for, like, later this year. Already mm -hmm. start work we started working on it, like, right now, believe it or not. So, yeah, something huge is happening, hopefully. Um, Ooh, yeah, cool. just... Keep an eye out on my channel, on the Base Gangs channel. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's let's hope for the best. Yeah, for sure. The, how like, like, in the scope of the projects that you've done before, is this like? You said this is the biggest project you've ever done, but in the scope of everything you've done at the Base Gang and your channel before, like, how big is this? Like, is it as big as hiding the sequels uh, for you? Or? I don't want to spoil too much. <laughs> just, no, let's just let's just keep it as it is for now but it, it is it's humongous <laughs> like, like it's an insane project all around like basically i'm not not prying for details but basically it just means it's it relative to the size that hide and seek was this is much bigger even absolutely yeah <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> already then this is gonna be good so this was this was a base game project right Hide and seek? No, 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 no. Uh, the, the one the I'm talking one. about right now. No, it's yeah. a solo project. Yeah. Solo, dude. This is sick. This is sick. I'm excited. Y'all are not ready. I, dude, the world was not ready when you started arranging for the base gang. But then <laughs> your solo work, dude. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm, I'm excited. Glad you're enjoying it, man. <laughs> um. So now that will now that you've kind of plugged your thing and uh, done your thing with advertising and such, this gives you the floor for the next few minutes to just ask me any questions should you have any for me so hmm. you have the floor like how how far along are you actually getting your first proper cover like acapella cover done and oh. is that a thing that you plan on doing regularly in the future or are you just sticking to reaction mm -hmm. so i've got two that i'm looking at doing right now so, um, are you familiar with, um, a lady named Sarah that's in the BSN that she's a, I think so. Yeah. She, I think she's a patron to, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, we are working on something. It is a, it is a song that my grandfather used to get played. My grandfather's father used to play this for him on guitar, this song from the 1920s. Uh -huh. I'm not going to spoil it yet. It's going to be a it's going to be a quick, easy, simple cover, but I just wanted to do this because Sarah's got a good voice and I was like I want to do something, but I don't want to do something too crazy. So I'm just like mm -hmm. I'll just lay out the background vocals for this and That's then That's perfect. We'll do that. I'm getting ready to start recording for that. And then hopefully that'll be coming out soon. I don't really have a date yet. So mm -hmm. that but that will come out soon. I've got my parts for it and everything. We just got to record it bite the bullet love it yeah um the second one i'm working on um with fernie and uh ah. he's 
<laughs> he's yep. a, he's a bit of a genius. He's um, crazy, yeah. I'm working on I think um, he like, he's like younger than me as well with a lower like and more darker resonant range. He's crazy. He's so did, underrated. <laughs> I've never like seriously. I didn't, know, I didn't know he was younger than you. I thought he was I, right around I my age. I think so at least like he's I'm not sure actually. 17 or 18. Somewhere. He's well I, I know he's younger but I didn't know how much younger. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But we're working on something. We're going to be doing like a short version of a uh recently popular Imagine Dragons song. So I don't know when that's going to come out, but I'm also due to record for that as well. <clears throat> that's incredible. I'm really not totally excited sure. for all that. I'm really not sure when I plan to get these released, but I do plan to do them. I know mm-hmm. my biggest issue getting myself in, in the recording studio, which is here in my office. But the biggest thing getting myself recorded was just that lack of self-confidence that I've always had with my voice. Like I would listen to myself back and I'd be like, Ugh. but uh, I'm starting to recently get over that. Like I've started talking with people like you, Peter. I mean, talking with people like uh, Jennifer Glatzoffer, you know, all these people in the music mm-hmm. industry and all the people in the BSN. And it's just, it's been a breath of fresh air and it's really put a new, it's reinvigorated me. I guess you could say put a new life in me, a new burning desire to try to do some more music of my own once in a while. Mm-hmm. But as far as um, it being a regular thing, it'll depend on uh, what everyone thinks. Um, if they're liking the content and you're like, holy crap, you need to do more. I mean, like, okay, maybe I'm, maybe exactly. I might do some more. Like you are your own worst critic. I've heard Jeff Castellucci say that line before. And it, it just means so much like get yeah. other people's opinion. <laughs> Truly. Definitely. Truly. And when you see that what you're doing actually like sounds good, like the, people want more, then you're going to do more. Exactly. And that's that line has really stuck with me ever since I, I heard him say it. And then I was like, and everyone else is telling me the same thing in BSN, you know, all the other people I've been talking to, you know, and it's mm-hmm. it's truly humbling. So now I've, I've gotten to a point to where I'm confident enough that I can record myself and then I can send my vocals off to get mixed. You know, and then I'm at least I'd like to think I'm confident enough to do that. So absolutely. <clears throat> but yeah, as far it's not going to be a very regular occurrence, but it's definitely something that I'm going to piddle around with, see where the interest lies. And uh, believe me, I have the desire to sing, but I don't know, man. This podcast stuff and the reactions—it's really taken off. Like it's I'm, really working out for you, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And like, it's a bit of a niche too because it's. You're, you find the niche in YouTube where you're just talking to singers and you're doing reactions. That's something that not everyone mm-hmm. else can say they do all the time. Of course you I got, get it, yeah. Of course you got Liz over at um the Charis- the charismatic voice that she some sometimes does like interviews and stuff, but mm-hmm. I do them way more often, or at least I th- like to think I will be. And I just Let wanted that, that to be your thing. Image. Yeah, 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 for sure. And just, mm-hmm. just being able to sit down and talk to people like you and just geek out over music and talk about stuff like Love that it. for yeah. an hour, hour and a half. It's just, it's a mm-hmm. good, it's a pretty chill feeling too. So, I mean, all my time, all my time, like usually goes into the YouTube channel about like the reactions in the podcast, but definitely will, uh, I will go for more acapella music if people want to hear it. So that's great. I'm excited to do it, man, for sure. You got anything else that comes to mind that you want to ask about? Yeah, I think I think that's that's all I needed to know. Yeah. Yeah. I sure. wish you good luck on your future projects. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We might have to uh, if I get if I get some music out and uh, we're able to work it out. Might have to uh, do a collab in the future at some point. Don't Absolutely, know. I'd be down. Let's do, let's go for it one day. Get some, get myself a small portfolio built up, and <laughs> we'll see how it works out, folks. Yeah, so. absolutely. All right. So if you if you're done with those, we'll move on to the community uh, questions. So first one is, uh, let's see, this one comes from Bass Krispies. If you had the option to do audio engineering, singing, arranging, or something else full time, what do you think you would enjoy the most? Ooh, like one of those things. Like one of them, yes. Or something else. 
I would say video editing. Like none none of those options there. I would go video editing 100%. It's it's I really enjoy working on like videos. Oh really? Um, yeah, yeah. Like it's honestly every every single aspect of like those it has a bit of fun to it. Like I love arranging. I love like editing audio, um tuning stuff, mixing. Like I wouldn't be able like audio wise I I wouldn't be able to pick a single like one thing, but in general, video editing is what I would go for. It's if my music career doesn't take off as much. <laughs> yeah, um, I still got my video editing skills. Oh yeah. How long have you been doing the video editing? Oh my god. I- I've been like ever since I was a little kid, I used to do like these dumb Roblox and Minecraft <laughs> like let's play videos. I would never upload them, but I would work on them like a proper gaming YouTuber. I think I did have like a gaming channel when I was like 11 or something. Yo, but yes. But I probably deleted everything out there. So, I've, the so yeah, I, I've been I've been doing video editing since I was like a little kid. I, I understand that struggle. I know I used to do that. <laughs> I did yeah. the same thing when I was like 14 or 15. Yep. Everyone like, started a gaming channel. <laughs> Everybody and their brother did. <laughs> Uh, this question comes from uh, Baseman Ma- uh, Mateo. Uh, how and where did you learn subharmonics? <clears throat> uh, I think I picked up subs when I first heard them done by like when I first joined BSN. People like uh, Clap It Up Dan, like Tommy, and like Jeff, obviously in voice play. When I first heard subs being done, I was like, I need to learn this. My first cover with subs, I think, was Believer by Imagine Dragons. I can't tell you exactly when that was, like two, three years ago. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, that's that's around the time when I picked picked up subharmonics. So that's okay. I gotcha. The um, how long did it take you to to get to where you're like in a comfortable position with subharmonics? So like, how long did it take you to? F- like truly feel like okay i can do these in a, in a studio I, now that I'm whenever i first started um learning subs it took me like a couple of weeks to even get out like one proper controlled note like <laughs> i st- struggled a bit with it and over yeah. time it just kept getting better and even until now it just I, I still keep getting more and more used to it more comfortable with it yeah so yeah i'm still just curious. a constant improvement I was curious because I'm just sitting here like twiddling with subs and I'm just now getting to a point where I can have a, a sustained note. Mm-hmm. I for the Oh, first it's still going to get better and better. Believe mm-hmm. me. I'll tell you what's funny. I was listening to, um, I was listening to the bass gangs cover of hide and seek. I was, I was literally just in here doing whatever. And then it mm-hmm. rotated to that cover of the song. And then I remember hearing your C sharp D flat one sub. And then, I heard it in this, and while I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna try for it. This is and this, I, I still had no idea how to do it. I, well, not fully, not a full idea how to do it. But I'm mm-hmm. just sitting here doing my thing, and then I just go, Whoa, and like I just pull up, pull that sub out of my butt out of nowhere, and and I just, <laughs> I was like, holy crap, that is the new best, highest quality and lowest sub I have ever done. That's sick. I'll have to send that to you later, but I just literally, mm-hmm. it's just out of nowhere. I just pulled that out of my, out of my, you know, and it just happened out of nowhere. <laughs> and I just, it was, that blew insane. my mind. But all that to say that, yeah, I'm still working on my subs, but that was my new lowest whenever I hit it. C sharp one is pretty damn low, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. How long did it, how many takes did it get you, did it take to get that um, C sharp? I couldn't tell you a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, I do tens of different takes. Even like not not just when recording audio, but when recording video as well. I am like the word perfectionist could be used in a negative context. <laughs> yeah. In it, like in my like, I record like for example when I did moment of silence with Casper, yeah. there was just w- this one section where I did like silence like down the octave. Yeah. It was an A1, I think. Yes. It, when, when, fil- yeah. when, when filming video for that, I did like 17 or 18 different takes in a row. And then yeah. when I'm done, when I'm in post-production, I would just watch through 
I, I put myself through hell literally while like, watching all 18 takes and picking out one. Like, why couldn't you just do like one or two takes? <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, perfectionism is not always a great thing. No, it really yeah. isn't. I get it. It's really a, it's, I would say like being a, being a singer is like most of our toxic traits are just the fact that we have to be a perfectionist or that we're perfectionists, that everything's got to be yeah, exactly yeah. right. It's so interesting. Yeah, I, I do a bunch of different takes when recording audio. Then I just pick out the best sections of each take and like put them together. I have to say that that C sharper yours was just absolutely monstrous, and I, <laughs> it, it took me a while to truly understand the depth of how monstrous it was. Especially now that you've told me how many times it took you to get it. Yeah. And the fact well, that you just held you. it that long. It, it is one of my favorites. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll we'll talk more about some other ones, but uh, let's see. So. Um, the Bard asks, um, did you try to get involved in your local acapella scene before trying solo, uh, music and multi-tracking? So you kind of did answer this already, but, um, local acapella scene, like acapella as a genre, as a thing in general, doesn't really exist here in Egypt. Like no one knows what it is. And like, that's kind of what made me like when I first started out doing these videos, I did Arabic songs. I didn't do any English stuff yet. Yeah. When I noticed that it's not gaining as much attention as I wanted to over here in the country, mainly because people don't really understand what it is, like what, what it is I'm actually doing, like mm -hmm. music with no instruments, instruments like that concept. I started pushing my content to foreign audiences, like all around the world, not just in my country. Yeah. And that worked out for me a lot more. So I just stopped doing Arabic stuff, focused on English covers for people all, all around the world, not just a certain geographical spot pretty much yeah that's pretty cool stuff. so yeah acapella is not really a thing here in my country so i no <laughs> yeah um so how is uh local uh, how is local music in your area as a whole not just acapella i honestly have never really been interested in arabic slash egyptian music culture like Fair enough yeah my, my my dad also makes me listen to it from time to time some stuff like is truly beautiful but i would stick to <laughs> i would stick to like western type music it's my thing i guess yeah well at the end of the day to um music that's out mm -hmm. from your direction isn't exactly for everybody exactly yeah. it's it requires it's like an acquired taste pretty much so let's see um kudo squared asks um so are there any big projects for the base game coming up? We got one coming in the next next month, hopefully. There will be something very exciting coming along. And later this, this year, we have something <laughs> planned that we all might really enjoy. Something very unexpected. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. See, I, I like staying tuned for base game content because they are, they're all, all the time pushing the boundaries of creative um, entertainment. Mm -hmm. So um, just the fact that Marwan says it's exciting, it's it, it, you know it's going to be exciting. Yep. There you go. So uh, let's see. Uh, Fernie asked this one. Um, how do you mix your bass tracks to sound so clean? Hmm. I, if we're going to like talk technical stuff here, I try to cut out as much of the low end on every single other part, like lead parts, background parts, everything else, just to let the bass shine in that region over there. Just boost the low end on the bass and cut it off and everything else. Oh, Not like cut it off completely, but like balance it so the bass is way more prominent in that part of the spectrum. Yeah, like like significantly reducing like the lower frequencies. Yeah. You parts, don't, right? you don't need like the low end that much in like background uh, vocals and like choir sections and stuff. Just keep it for the bass, cut it off in like your lead vocals and your background vocals. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's honestly like, I didn't know you could do that reasonably whenever you're mixing. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Dr. Chest Fry asks, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's a nice name. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> what is your opinion on Sprite? So I'm assuming he's referring to um, the soda. I'm more of a Pepsi guy, to be honest. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm truly a Pepsi addict, like at least 
one or two glasses of Pepsi a day. Did, did like, you ever not not even cans? Like I get the two liter bottle and like fill out <laughs> glasses along the day. With, like, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Before but, like, I, I I like Sprite. Sure. Oh yeah, I think before before I quit drinking soda about five years ago, I remember. Um, I remember reading up on Pepsi, and it turns out that Pepsi was actually founded and like created in the same state that I live in over here in the U.S. Ah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I don't remember if Sprite is a. I don't remember what company it was with, but back before I stopped drinking soda, I remember drinking that all the time. It was mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of uh. More requests for info, and this one's mainly from me, but I do, and I'm sure a lot of other people want to hear about this, but tell us about um, this first arrangement. There's two. Um, This first arrangement being Emperor's New Clothes. Just kind of tell us about about it as a whole. So like some of the cool notes, you know, how long it took you, you know, kind of briefly dive into the project for us. Like most prominent aspect about it is i love how each of the four of us got to shine in that like little low riff in the bass register in different techniques <clears throat> like with tommy's growl at the start bobby's low chest stuff peter's crazy chest fry like we all got to shine in that arrangement the bridge yeah. section like the mortal kings are ruling castles like that that part was so sick to like transition to and then go back to the like in the original music video, also he, uh, Brendan Yuri, kind of goes through like this phase of transforming from human to like demon or whatever. And by the end of the video, he's like truly in hell, and, like it's all red around him and stuff. And you can see it yeah. in the video in in our cover as well. It goes from like the blue to like the bridge section to like the red when we're like like transformed. Yeah, yeah and we're also that. singing together. Yeah. Um. As usual, loved messing around with bell tones in that that section as well. That's something I've and of course, in music of is... course, of course, the B zero. That, that <laughs> yes, I gotta give a shout out to the B zero. So we need to talk about that. So how long did it take you to get that B zero? <laughs> oh my god, I remember trying it like, like legit for days. Like I, I was like determined. To get that, B- I'm gonna have that B zero in that arrangement, whatever it takes. <laughs> I tried and tried and just until I got it, and it sounded so perfect. It's like I'm, I'm glad I got it in there. It was so <clears throat> incredibly monstrous. Like, I don't. I mean, like, in my personal opinion, I think that B zero sounded even more monstrous than Jeff's in uh, Halo. I guess, like the context <clears throat> of it, yeah, with the drop and everything, you could yeah. say so. Yeah, my personal opinion, it just crazy this i mean the man spent i mean marlon literally spent days trying to get this so y'all better be thankful that was that, yep. that's hard <laughs> that's hard dude i remember i did technically i did do a b0 one time while stretching for a b flat one in chest but i just i ah, kind of slipped into it but like an just, accidental like an accidental B0. like half a second b0 but yeah, yeah. I, I don't ever count that it happens. because I, I wasn't trying for it mm-hmm but I remember that being just crazy. <laughs> so what was like, what was one of your favorite things about the Emperor's New Clothes project as a whole? I know you mentioned it was nice to see everyone get their own piece. Is there anything else that stands out that was one of your favorite things about the project? Like, I like how the first project that is on the official Base Gang channel is a project of mine. Like, I got to start it out. Like, that. that is an honor in and of itself. Isn't that crazy? Um, yeah. And <laughs> apparently people say I have like a thing for arranging Halloween music. Like that's my thing. So if they say so, then sure. Like Emperor's New Clothes, Hide and Seek. Uh, my solo stuff like Grim Green Ghosts, for example. Yeah. Like Five Nights at Freddy's. Spooky I, Scary I Skeletons? I guess, yeah, I kind of. Spooky Scary Skeletons, definitely. I kind of work well with Halloween, like scary type music. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that trend too. Like I, I don't think it's like a like an active trend like you're trying to do it but it's just like just yeah kind of I, I don't go for it but that that's just how it goes yeah yeah i guess so we kind of talked about emperor's new clothes so um i also did the video on that and i think i remember listing how many base register notes were in it and i remember just being absolutely baffled about it 
there was like four D D twos. There was like there was literally I counted the you amount counted of counted the notes. I, I just wanted to see because I, I I normally don't do this stuff, but I was like, you know what? This is such a bassy song. I want to. I'm going to do this because I'm curious. <coughs> there was. There was literally sick. like 15 E flat ones in that entire yep. song. It is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the coolest things ever. Uh, um, so, and another arrangement that I wanted to ask about as a whole, like what all went into it, um, what your favorite things are about it and stuff like that is uh, hide and seek. And then I'll ask one more after this. Mm-hmm. So... Like when Lauren first uploaded her like little short cover of hide and seek in this stairwell, I, like I think around May, April, 2022, I just absolutely fell in love with it. Had it on repeat the entire day. I messaged the guys instantly, like sent them the link to the video. I was like, we need to do hide and seek with Lauren for Halloween. They were all on board. We messaged her. She agreed. I started working on it and like hide and seek, like the original <laughs> song itself. I've been in love with it. Ever since, like, uh, the the game Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh man, that's a great uh, series. Yeah, yeah. Hide and Seek has kind of been associated with some like music videos for Five Nights at Freddy's that I used to watch when I was a kid. So I've been I've been familiar with the song for quite a while. Totally in love with it. So I I was really honored to like get to get to work on a project with Lauren Paley, uh, who who like kind of brought it back to the light, like that that song through her her uh, her TikToks. And uh, yeah, arrangement wise, it might be my my like my craziest arrangement yet. Lots of different crazy stuff in there, like that dubstep transition out of nowhere, that the was... knock knock on the door, like the sound effect, the like Peter's operatic stuff, the crazy C sharp ones everywhere, the I... different key changes near the outro, and yeah. I mean, everyone had a C sharp one in that, didn't they? I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I thought. I was like, I'm pretty sure I heard one from everybody, but I wasn't 100. percent I figured I'd ask. Yep. What's? I'm trying to think. There's a crazy high note that Lauren did in there. It was like um like an E flat six, I think. I Maybe? think so. Yeah, in the outro, I think E six or E flat six. <clears throat> yes. On the like da, 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 like that. that that high one. Yes. There, yes. In the six octave. Yeah. Yeah, that was nuts. I'll tell you something else that was one of my favorite things about that arrangement was that the um huh, the, the all the funky chords closing up to the end. You know how it starts to slow down and she's getting ready to like do the yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. What was running through your mind when you were doing this part of the arrangement? I was like, I need to end this in the most epic way ever. And then just bring it back to the roots like that. Na, 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 na. Like that slow, stripped out outro right there. Just end it in the epic way, most epic way possible. Tons of different key changes. Tempo slows down. Choir builds up. And then just back to zero. What, who was doing that um, That monstrous low note that while she was playing with the marionettes? So it, there was like, a, like an E flat one somewhere. It sounded very chesty. I think that was Bobby near the very end of the that section there like it was all four of us on that bass line like yeah. each of us got a little section yeah. i think it was peter then tommy then me then bobby but yeah. the one you're talking about i think is bobby dude that was that was crazy <laughs> too there, there was just way too much there was just way too much in that arrangement for me to tr- yep. try to break it all down but it was crazy <laughs> um one more arrangement i want to know about is um moment of silence Oh, here we go. This one was this one was <laughs> this one was fun from start to finish. It might be my most favorite solo project I've ever done. And again, the song itself, I've been a huge fan of it for a while. Um when I reached out to Casper to do it with me, he really enjoyed it as well. And uh yeah. Like I say hide and seek was my craziest, like most complicated arrangement. Moment of silence was the most number of parts in an arrangement i've ever had like it's it's big it's my biggest arrangement not my yeah. best arrangement necessarily but it truly is the biggest i had a lot of fun working on that messing with like the different like electric guitar sounds in there again with the bell tones of course um 
the crazy low stuff, the crazy high stuff from Casper, arranging all that stuff for him. Um, yeah, just one of one of my favorite projects that I've ever worked on. How many do you remember off the top of your head about how many tracks you ended the song with? I think in like the bridge had like over like 20 something tracks, maybe 20. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's crazy. Like beatbox, bass, four leads or something, 12 background parts, bells <laughs> everywhere. It It's just it's all around crazy for, but for i anyone, loved it i love it for anyone that has not heard his solo work go do it do, do yourself a favor <laughs> and go do it moment of silence in itself is also ridiculous because you've got bass singer here doing bass singer stuff but then you've also got tenor doing tenor stuff and a tenor doing bass singer stuff it's hilarious and a bass singer doing tenor stuff <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. literally everything yeah it's it's one of the craziest things i've ever heard i remember after i listened to it and i was like i've got to go watch some reactors react to this the reaction videos for that one are just incredible i love going back and re-watching some of them it's, it's so fun to watch <laughs> it's like it was one of the coolest part or one of the coolest solo pieces i've heard from anyone in a while like i've <laughs> I'd, i've caught myself listening to it here at the house while i'm trying to work several times and i'm just like i'm just bopping along this is great hell yeah um let's see I think that was the last one that came to mind. I'll have to ask you some more later at another time, but uh, absolutely. Let's see. So, uh, Fernie had one more uh, mixing question for you. Um, he said okay. that he noticed that you usually have groups of three different harmonies, but he said you usually you have two on one side and one on the other. Do you have a rule of not having too much stuff panned in the center? And if so, what do you usually have set on the center? whenever you're mixing so for the center you definitely want to have the bass in there don't pan the bass to any of the sides definitely have the kick in the center kick and snare in the center um for background parts try and pan them out as much as you can if they're three you could like have one in the center and two on each side if they're four you could have two and two that's why most of the time i have four instead of three uh to not fill up the center that much um lead has to be in the center lead harmonies could be panned um, what else could there be? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Obviously. Try normal. messing with like crazy panning effects. If you're doing like bell tones and stuff from ear to ear, yes. maybe some of like those wind sounds like, whoosh, like that stuff and beatboxing could like move from one ear to another as well. Um, yeah. But not keeping too much stuff in the center is a rule you should follow. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, there was one thing I forgot to ask you about on your on hide and seek. Um, how did you? Uh, the beatboxing is pretty complicated in that too, I would think. So, yep. Tell me a little about the beatboxing for that arrangement, and then we'll move on to another question. Hmm. So, what most people might not know is that when I do my beatboxing, I record each sound like on its own, like the kick separately, the snare, all different sound effects, yeah, and just layer them onto each other like i don't just i don't just record one beatbox track for the entire part i just played the beatbox into different sounds um yeah <clears throat> for hide and seek it was really fun to mess around with all the like the little different sound effects in the dubstep section specifically like the <clears throat> like that's little stuff right there yeah um like that like triplet type section in like the Like in the like pre, is a chorus? I don't know. Whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no definitely about. the beatbox in hide and seek was very fun to work with. It yeah. was was that portion of hide and seek was that like what was the time signature for that? Was that like seven eight? I don't think it felt I like think seven it's just eight. Four four. I don't know. <laughs> it really. felt it felt like seven eight at at some times with the with the way the beatboxing went. But, I get I get how it could feel like. 70 but i think it's just 4-4 four, four. yeah it, it it did sound it, to the end i was i remember i was like this has got to be in 4-4 four, four. but it definitely had a 7-8 feel to it whenever mm -hmm. with with that crazy beatboxing that's fair yeah, yeah yeah but yeah so um one final question for you from the community um tom guest 16 asks uh will the base gang meet up in person in 2023 we are working towards that. The thing is, like, over here, 
in my country, it's kind of really hard to get to get out of the country. They don't want you to leave for some reason. Getting a visa to Europe has been proven to be significantly difficult, but I'm I'm working towards it, and that might be a thing in the future. Who knows? Definitely, dude. Interesting. Getting out of the country is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. But, but hey, you know, I mean, the possi- it's it it's in the cards. Hopefully, it'll. It's definitely work a possibility. Out. Yeah. 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 Hopefully it'll work out. So, um, yeah. So that pretty much brings us to the end of all the questions I have for you. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, uh, Marwan is on YouTube. He's also on social media. Make sure you do go check him out. He's got good music. Make sure you go listen if you haven't already. And then after that, go check out my reactions to his music and the base games music. Hopefully you'll learn a lot. Um, I'm going to start sending off these podcasts with a new, uh, like a new feel. So what I think I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start having the guests do like something that they're known for. So you're known for having a, a punchy chest note and a, and very good subharmonics. So what is the lowest subharmonic that you can do at the moment that you think? Let's test it out. Wait. I, I, I like kind of have a cold right now, so it's not the best time to ask me to do this, but I'm, I'm going to try. Give, <clears throat> give it a shot. We'll send our people off. Try to like C2. <clears throat> That's like G. <laughs> my subs are not the best right now because like my, my throat is messed up. <clears> throat> my subs are not there, dude. <laughs> not at all. Not today. Mine's not there either. But like Folks, that happens. It just could. It's it's not the day for subs today. That's that's how it is. It Tomorrow could be way different. No. <clears throat> Folks, it has been good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Even, I think that was like a B flat zero, maybe. Could be. I don't know. <laughs> I ain't even tried. Folks, it was good to have you. It was good to have Marwan join us today. We had a lot of uh, stuff that we flung at him, but uh, he withstood the test. So we'll have to have you on again at some point for like a follow-up podcast. We'll talk more Absolutely. music stuff. Yeah, this was fun, man. Dude, it was great having you. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you have um, any other questions you'd like me to ask him for the future podcast, make sure you drop them in the comments. Also... Uh, make sure you check out his Patreon, Base Gangs Patreon, in case you are looking for a way to take your contribution to them to a new level. Also, make sure you drop a like, uh, throw some comments down below. Make three, sure you throw a subscription to both Marwan and myself if you're enjoying the content. If you're also gaining the musical knowledge and enjoyment. Also, one last piece of thing, and then piece of thing one last piece and then we'll close this one so if i've recently started a patreon as well so if you are gaining musical knowledge and enjoyment out of these uh videos podcasts etc then and you do want to make that contribution uh take that contribution to another level through your subscriptions i would encourage you to check out patreon as well you can support me as little as three dollars a month you can also do the same for marwan the base gang they have very low plans if you just if you want to support them in a more significant way so yeah, with that said, we're going to bring this podcast to a close. Marwan, it was good to have you, and hopefully we'll be able to line this up again soon. And uh, guys, this has been The Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. Take care of yourselves. Love you. We'll Thanks see you next watching, time. Everyone. Thanks, man. Y'all take care. <laughs>